I'd like to call this meeting of the Internal Services Committee to order, and the first item is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Next item is adoption of the agenda. Romano adopts the agenda. Zinner support. Thank you, Commissioner Romano. And Zinner uh, made the motion and seconded it to adopt the agenda. Is there any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. Motion passes 10 to 0. Thank you. Next is approval of the minutes of the Internal Services Committee for November 15th of this year. I'd like a motion to approve. So moved, Hall. Support, Wallace. Thank you. Commissioner Hall and Wallace made the motion and support it to approve the minutes. Any discussion? Seeing none, please vote. motion passes 10 to 0. Thank you. Public participation. This is the first opportunity for public participation for those who wish to speak for a maximum of three minutes on any item that's on today's agenda. There'll be an opportunity for public participation later in the meeting for people to speak on any subject. Anyone wish to speak on items on today's agenda? speak on today's agenda. Hearing none, we'll close public participation and move into item 6A, budget amendment for facilities, projected cost of utility bills for remainder of 2022, $801,900. I'd like a motion to move the full board. So move, Hall. Thank you, Commissioner Romano and Hall made the motion and support it to move this item to full board. Lynn? Uh, thank you. Uh, as the chairman indicated, this adjustment is being requested to cover the projected expense for utilities through the end of 2022. Utilities between 2017 and 2021 averaged about $3.2 million. Uh, for 2022, the cost is trending towards $4.2 million. Uh, which is an increase of approximately 30% due to primarily because of price increases. Uh, electricity, for example, uh, during the months of January to June were actually uh, six cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, they are now 15 cents a kilowatt hour. Uh, also, there appears that there was a utilization spike, but that seems to have leveled out. Natural gas continues to <laughs> increase based on market conditions. And for instance, the cost of natural gas in January of 2021 was 2.89 of for uh, the MMBTU, which is a million BTUs. In July of 2022, it is actually $7.42, or $7.72 an MMBTU. Uh, so I'm cautiously optimistic with moving money around that we can cover uh, to the end of 2022. Thank you, Commissioner Zong. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Lynn, how are you? Real Love your top, you? by the way. Thank you. Um, are we doing anything to conserve energy, knowing that these costs have gone up? I, I mean, certainly over uh, several years, we've done the LED lighting conversions. Uh, I, actually, all mechanical equipment that you buy today is just like in your home, it's more energy efficient. Uh, so it's, it seems to be market-driven, what is happening. 
Uh, certainly in some locations when you're on uh, electrical lighting panels, it's like we can't always turn off an office light because they're not there because the whole panel serves a certain area. So it's either on or off. Oh, are we looking to assess how we could conserve energy in the future, knowing that um, these prices are not going to go down? Uh, well, as far as if we were to change the way the lighting system is, there would be substantial cost in just that conversion. Now, in the area of natural gas, uh, there's certain uh, articles that the Ukrainian war is also impacting this number. Uh, so they feel that when that war ends, but I don't know when it's going to end, that the prices will drop substantially. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Farrington. Thank you, Chair. Hi, Lynn. Hi. Um, I guess I'm a little confused on a couple of things here. One is it says it went up uh, from 3.2 million to 4.2 million, you know, which is a 30% increase, high but to be expected mm -hmm. with what's going on in the world. But then you give two examples, one electricity is up 250%, mm -hmm. natural gas 267%. Those two facts don't equate. Yeah, I was pulling utility bills and also finance put some time into presenting uh, or for taking a look at the whole uh, account. And that's what they are seeing. Now, they don't go just because it went up 30%, they don't raise things 30%. They look at trends. So I don't know if that really answers your question, but I'll try and provide more information on these utility bills? Yeah, I, I guess I would like to hear more about it before um, the, the final meeting because those facts don't match, okay. first of all. And two, while we've heard of inflation very high, mm -hmm. no one has said that electricity is up 250%. So the red flag goes up that there's an yes. error here. <laughs> Again, I'm not saying it's wrong, but yeah. I see nothing to base that mm -hmm. upon fact, both because the first number is a 30% and the second number is a 250%, combined with the fact that nothing out mm -hmm. there in society says electricity has gone up 250%. So I would like some more background information before Yes, the it, and it could be the accounts that were on a primary supply, so it's a different It could be rate. just one little part that's yeah. at 250 but yeah, that's what I'd yeah. like more explanation. Yeah, because we have, we're on a primary supply at the service center, so there could be 10 different locations. Uh, so you, nothing's metered separately, uh, and you'll get a monthly bill of like 219,000. Uh, but the primary supply rate is different uh, from like a residential type rate, or in some of our buildings that are just metered separately. Yeah, because like the Ukraine, while there's an effect on the gas, I haven't seen these kind of increases, but not the electricity. So. Um, not at that rate anyways. So, thank yes, you. I definitely was a little shocked yeah. when, when I saw it. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Perna. Lynn, a two-part question. First one is in the 2023 budget, you've already built in this increase for this coming year? Yes, finance does an excellent job in watching trends. Uh, so they were seeing this coming, so it was factored in. And second question, you know, there's a lot of different companies in, around the United States and a lot of companies here in Michigan that are offering savings on lighting for commercial buildings. Have you looked into that? Because there's these, all these new bulbs that they're promoting for commercial buildings, which obviously we have multiple. Have we looked into that at all? Yes, over the past several years, we've done a lot of lighting conversions. Uh, and gone to the LED lights. And We've, you're continuing to go into LED now? Yes. Yeah, pretty much LED is the standard now for a new building that it, they will spec LED energy efficient lights. And did you notice a substantial savings as a result of that? Because we're on a primary supply and you get these big bills, it, it's not like you can always pinpoint and say, oh, it must be the conversion in bulk. Because a lot of it's driven by temperature. Like, we had a very hot summer. 
Uh, so we saw consumption go up. Uh, so it's not always we can pinpoint, oh, it must be the result. Just like at home, I look at my bill and I have LED bulbs and it's not like I see a significant difference in cost. All right, thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Chair. Um, there was a statement made that our costs are, we have, we have to expect our costs to be going up. And it has been, and it will probably always be going up to a degree. But I think we have to understand that situations and government leadership has a factor in how um, our costs are going up. And they may not always have to be going up. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. 6B, support agreement with Metro, uh, yeah, Metro Controls Incorporated Web Controls Support Agreement for the Automatic Logic Building Management System $46,986 annually, and this is for a three-year term. Lynn? Uh, yes, this uh, excuse item. Excuse me. Uh, I need a motion to move to full board. Perna support. Thank you. Commissioner Wallace and Perna made the motion and supported it to move this item to full board. Thank you. Lynn? Uh, yes, this item pertains to a three-year technical support agreement with Metro Controls for the Automated Logic Building Management System. Uh, the building management system is a computer-based system that controls the environment within the building. Uh, the automated logic system consists of hardware and software, and the core function is to manage that environment inside the building. The technical support agreement will provide uh, scheduled maintenance and they will review the performance uh, of the system. They also review what they call an alarm buffer, and they will investigate all alarms, and they will make any corrections necessary if they are control related. They also utilize trend and report information in order to verify performance of the mechanical system. We also obtain expedited service access to web control workshops. They provide software upgrades and maintenance. Uh, they keep a database and they back up this database uh, off-site. Uh, they also have annual on-site training session and they also have remote access and telephone support. This support agreement is actually for 17 different locations. Uh, so the annual cost of the support agreement uh, is spread over the 17 locations and is running at approximately 2,700 a building. Uh, so this is utilizing the discounted rate of $46,986 annually. We are therefore requesting authorization to enter into this three-year agreement at a cost of $46,986 annually, or $140,958 for a three-year period. Uh, this would result in a savings of $2,040 annually, or $6,120 over the th three-year period, taking advantage of the discounted rate and also the fact that we're locking in a rate for three years. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, the training that you mentioned they offer, is that included in the contract or do you have to pay fees? No, that's included. Do we have people go to that every yes. year? Yes, it's on site. Oh, okay. Yeah. Commissioner Sabatini. Thank you, Chair. Lynn, what are we using right now? It's automated logic, metro control. It's the same system? That yes. We're okay. Yes, they are the also the authorized representative, local representative for automated logic. And how long have we been doing business with them? 
Oh, we had a prior three-year agreement that came to this board, I would say maybe 15 years. Okay. It's very user-friendly. Not for me. You know, I don't do computers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Brown. Thank you, uh, Lynn. This system helps us be efficient, right? It helps our systems operate efficiently, yes. which leads to our last discussion about efficiencies and the county. Yes, we invested in this system some time ago, a substantial amount of money to yes. help create some efficiencies and help control costs so that it's more regulated. Yes, and it also impacts from a practical standpoint. There's a lot of adjustments that we can make to the equipment online. In the old days, we had to drive over to the facility and, and make the adjustments. We used to have to open up the windows up at the next building and start to keep it cool, but we don't have to do that anymore. So anyway, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item 6C, Budget Amendment Capital Improvement Fund, Case Management System for Prosecutor's Office, uh, excuse me, $803,050. Jaco? Uh, excuse me. Motion for 6C, and D. Support. Thank you. Commissioner Farrington, supported by Commissioner Hall, made a motion to move these to full board. Uh, commissioners, we <clears throat> did an RFP for a new system, a uh, case management system. This has been in the works now for about two to three years. Um, and the decision was made that we would like to offer uh, this to Carpal Solutions, um, uh, you know, through this RFP. Um, the solution will streamline and improve prosecutors' workflows and case management. Uh, it'll allow them to share documents electronically with other agencies, departments, uh, as well as uh, the legal community. As you can see, Doc Schmidt is here as well uh, to speak to any of the business case or questions that you might have. Um, if there's any questions. Surprisingly, there are no questions. Am I on the wrong one? There we go. Commissioner Hall. explanation that I have no clue what that says oh um, well mind my manners good afternoon commissioners I didn't say nice that having you me. back Jacob <laughs> um, I I really have to play pled innocence that <laughs> insert there that insert there comes directly from finance they uh, when we submitted they would then make sure that it is that language uh, so they've you know that's all I can say okay and I noticed I also, that in the approvals finance has approved the recommendation for this transfer yeah good answer Jacob thank you <laughs> thank you chair thank you chair I remember when we first um, went through the prosecutor's office this was his goal to have better communication with all the agencies in the county, uh, police agencies. So I'm glad that this has come. 
and um, I hope it passes. It's, of course, we know it's very important for um, timeliness and accuracy, and um, I, I hope it. I hope it goes through. I, I expect to, but I don't know. And I, but I do hope so. And I'm, I'm glad to say at this point. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Kleinfeld. Just, I think, with respect to what Commissioner Hall was asking, that's the thing where instead of just putting fund balance money directly into capital outlay and then finding out at the end of the year it wasn't necessarily spent on what we thought it was going to be spent on we created that line item where we hold it until it's time to do a project and then they move it over and I think that's what this is is uh, it's the, the line item we created where we're holding the money that they know they're going to be able to use for capital outlay and then as they use it they move it over Thank you. That's correct. I, See, that, that, ex, that same explanation was given to me at some point. <laughs> but now that you say it, I remem remember. <laughs> Commissioner Zong. Thank you, Chair. Jayco, um, are there any costs that will be incurred for importing or transferring current data that's into the in, new system? That's all included it's in included. the whole process. Okay. That's correct. And they offer the support for that? Yeah, they offer support with our, uh, our um, technical expertise as well as theirs. Do you anticipate any issues or any, like, downtime? From what I've heard, uh, the rollouts uh, throughout Michigan, there's, I think, 13 counties now on the system, have been pretty good. That uh, was my next question, yeah. is if you knew any other counties that are utilizing this software? Uh, we know uh, Kent County is on this, and I think uh, Todd informed me that uh, Wayne County is in the process of implementing. So there's quite a few counties in the state. Uh, you know, the state system that we're on today, PACPAN, has been there forever, and the state doesn't update the system anymore. And that really created the need for a new system. And I think they will probably not continue with that. I think the state will probably also move in this direction. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Sabatini. Thank you, Chair. Um, Jaco, in regards to the data, um, would we be hosting the data? Uh, Carpel will most likely, thought you will know whether it's, it's cloud host. Carpel will host the data. And, but it is the county's data. So if we ever switch to a different vendor in the future, it is our data. Okay. In regards to um, streamlining the data, um, I know there's been talks of the sheriff using, everyone's using different platforms. Is this kind of where all the data will be housed in one spot where the prosecutor will be grabbing it um, if need be and so on so that there's not duplication of data being put in different systems? Yeah, when it's cloud hosted, it is their responsibility to host the data in one location and also back up the data. In other words, if there's a system down situation or whatever issue they need to be able to restore, that's part of the requirement with the cloud hosted companies. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Jake, I have one follow-up question. Uh, with Commissioner Sabatini, while the vendor will host our data and we own it, um, there have been cases in the past that I've heard of where vendors have charged, let's say, excessive fees. They acknowledge you own it, but you want it, pay up. Uh, is there something in the contract that limits them from gouging us? I don't know if you know that talk. We, we rely on the standard uh, IT department uh, RFP for that language, so I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, yeah, I, I cannot give you the language, but I can so, uh, most certainly research it. We've been working with uh, legal, our legal department extensively on making sure that we don't have issues with data. So any new contracts, we make sure that data is accessible and it's available for us to pull out. Uh, as you know, we had an issue with... Uh, Quatran in this past year. Yeah, I'd just like to make sure that there's something in the contract that limits what they can charge us for getting our own data back to us. Yep, I'll get back to you. Thank you. Commissioner Brown. Are there redundancies built in? I mean, it's a lot of information that 
we're, we're storing with them. If there's yes. an issue, how do we? Uh... Yes, that is part of the agreement. Uh, the agreement with uh, cloud hosting is to make sure that there's uh, proper redundancy built in, disaster recovery, and all of that. And it's all in so, there. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 11 to 0. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Item 6E, contract with AT&T, ILEC, complete link service for $21,384. I need a motion to move to full board. Thank you. Commissioner Wallace and Perna made the motion and supported it to move this item to full board. Jaco? Uh, commissioners, as you know, we've, um, <coughs> AT&T, as well as of us, have been trying to move away from copper lines for quite a few years. AT&T uh, told us probably five, six years ago that that's their intent and, you know, we need to move on it. Um, and um, we still have a few copper lines. Uh, about 110 or so at the moment. Uh, this contract is specifically for those copper lines. It's a two-year contract that we sign, uh, sign up for, and it's the same cost as it was during the last uh, contract, which is, I think, $33 per line. So um, we would just like to renew the contract for the next two years, and hopefully we can get rid of, of these lines by then. Commissioner Song. Thank you, Chair. Jaco, are all of these lines being used? Yes. We keep very good tabs on the lines. We, uh, quite a few years ago, uh, actually, I was the project manager at that time, uh, went and did a reconciliation of all our phone lines in the county, cleaned it up, and since then we've, we've kept pretty good tabs on the different lines that we have. Okay. The biggest difficulties, uh, some of the elevator lines, some of the emergency lines, things like that, uh, you know, cannot be because of location or whatever reason, cannot be moved to other services, it's still on copper line. So we know which numbers and where they're in service. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Perna. Question, on the two year period, are they guaranteeing that those lines will be replaced within two years or are they? No. They're not? There's no guarantee for that. This is just a contract for the next two years, as you probably know, AT&T move slow, like I said, we started this process probably five, six years ago. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, we're hoping, I think they also have difficulties with that. I mean, the infrastructure is pretty big and pretty large. So to convert everything and provide us with solutions that can, uh, you know, uh, take this over. One of the things they use nowadays is wireless connectivity. Um, you know, but some of that is just not there yet. So they don't come back with another contract for another two years after the two years. Is there any, any kind of incentive that can be offered? I, uh, I mean, w you know, we can try that. Uh, in my experience with AT&T, it's, you know, I think this is a good contract just because we're paying the same price that we did before. All right, thank you. Commissioner Farrington. Thank you, Chair. I asked for a little leeway. I want to comment on the previous uh, item that we had. Um, I read the contract. There's item number 15. It pays $1,000 to get our data back. So, yeah, which, which is, is a nominal amount, and you always want a number in there so they can't boost it to a higher number. Yeah. So just want to let you know, Chair. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for that, Commissioner. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 10 to 0. 
11 to 0. Thank you. For items 6F and G, there's some um, confusion about the wording of the motion and whether it's needed or not, and it's been suggested that we move F and G to forward to the Finance Committee if the Finance Chair is agreeable with that. I'll make that motion, Chair. I'll support that motion. Thank you. A motion has been made by Commissioners Haw and Romano to it was Chair, it was Commissioner Haw, for the record, that made the, uh, made the motion. <laughs> to, to move uh, 6 F and G to the Finance Committee later this month. Seeing no speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. On to 6H, Budget Amendment Capital Improvement Fund, Software Defined Network Environment Finance Payment 3 of 5 for $1,126,397.10. Motion to move to full board. Thank you. Commissioners Nard and Farrington made the motion and supported it to move this item to full board. Jaco. Commissioners, this is uh, payment three of five payments that uh, was approved in 2020 uh, for the software defined networking project. Um, we started in that year. So this is just the uh, payment that we committed to. It's at 0% interest over five years. Commissioner Sabatini. Thank you, Chair. Um, just for means of consistency, I know this is in the uh, Capital Improvement Fund. Wouldn't we also need a transfer for this item? Similar to the previous? I think that transfer is mentioned in the motion, correct? In the uh, recommendation? We, we usually have a separate um, a separate amendment. It would be a budget amendment and then it would be the actual contract itself. I'm, I'm just keeping consistency with what we've been doing with the capital improvement fund. I'm just wondering, Commissioner, if that's not to do with the fact that the contract was approved in 2020 as a separate that, week. That, that very well could be. I, I think we just need to look into that just so that we're consistent. Uh, we, we've done it like this, you know, since then, and we have three of these payments, and we've always done it on this basis. I don't mind changing it. I'm just saying we have done it like this before. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Item 6I, uh, various agreements for information technology maintenance agreement for first quarter. $1,133,195.41. Thank you. Was that Commissioner Wallace? Commissioner Farrington and Wallace made the motion and supported it to move the uh, item 6A, 6I to full board. Jaco? Uh, commissioners, these are the um, regular agreements that we bring to you for maintenance payments. This, uh, this one is specifically for Axon, which is the di digital evidence management system for prosecutors. Um, core technologies that's used for Talon, it's a um, 
sheriff application that they use, um, uh, NeoGov HR, um, and then also switch in hardware maintenance as well as Qualtrics, which is the company we use during the um, um, COVID uh, situation, and we continue to use that product now for health in many different uh, situations. Seeing no speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Moving on, I'd like to take item 6J and K together, budget amendment for capital improvement fund for Microsoft Office 365, Google services to exchange project, and then the contract to people-driven technology for those products. Uh, motion to move the full board. Support Kleinfeld. Thank you, Commissioners Nard and Kleinfeld made the motion and supported it to move items 6J and K to full board. Jaco. Um, commissioners, this is for the conversion from um, our current Google email environment to um, Microsoft Exchange. Main reasons for that is because uh, we own Microsoft Exchange due to our Microsoft licensing, and we're paying 240000 a year right now for Google, so it will um, be a $240,000 savings pretty much for us to move in this direction. The, uh, uh, just regarding the whole process, I want to be open and clear about this. We went to bid, and we got no bids. Um, we then worked with legal and asked them, you know, what our options are. They said we can try and get three quotes from different companies, just quotations, provide them the bid, and ask them to give us those quotes. Uh, we only got one quote. We provided it to four companies that we believe that will be able to provide these services. So at the end, one company uh, responded and provided us uh, this quote and most of the most of the reasons they state was that they don't have the expertise or they don't have the total expertise and so forth so that's where we are today so this company is the only company that provided us a quote so I'm here in front of you today to ask you to approve this or I do understand that this is not you know the exact way a normal RFP goes, but that's where we are. Um, yeah, and I, it, you know, if you have any questions, I would gladly answer those. Commissioner Brown. Yeah, thank you. Um, it's, I had an inquiry about this. Uh, someone had talked to me about it just recently. He said, you know, they heard that we were on the street for a bid and that they only had one bidder and they couldn't find access to the quote to be able to bid on it. And I kind of odd that they, would, they wouldn't know how to do that, but they were, there's a state site, our admittance site, that we go on, what else do you, where else do you post the bids at? We posted, uh, posted on uh, mi the admittance site where all, and we tell our What about, vendors. is there any other technology sites that, that you could post that, that go out there to the market? I mean, you've doing this, you're doing this a long time, obviously, but is there any other sites that you could offer to put out there that, would have a maybe a broader reach or, or reach another audience that might be able to provide it. You know, there there might be potential other sites. We just find that Mitten is where everybody goes because what they do is they set up uh, they set up alerts. So when certain bits come up, sure they they can. Well, I'm very familiar you know, with the Mitten site. Notified, so. it's out, it, it serves us well yeah. and everyone else across the state. But I also heard that there's another site that these people were looking at that they, they couldn't find it and I, I don't know why well so I'll, I'll gladly post it on other sites I you know what I can also tell you what we also do is we contact companies that we know that can do this and we tell them 
there's a bit out on the Midden side, can you please respond to it? And it, it, it's very interesting, uh, quite honestly, Commissioner. Uh, there was probably a hundred people that opened the bid. You okay. can you can get the, that stat, stats from the Midden side. So I think a hundred people opened the bid. Six or seven downloaded, if you remember correctly, and nobody responded. It's kind of unusual, I mean, that $250,000 is not the biggest IT contract out there, but nonetheless, it's uh, it's business. I mean, is the marketplace so busy that uh, no one wants to bid on these, no one wants a job? I can't believe that. I mean, it seems to me that they're not aware of it, I guess. Is there any rush to do this? Do we Can we, can we uh, postpone this and, and, and take a look at, I mean, I, don't, I mean, I had one person inquire, but, you know, the, is there, and I don't know enough about even the, the, the subject matter to even say what site they're looking at, but um, just seems to me there's got to be some other people out there, in my opinion. But um, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Farrington. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I, I guess if people can't find it, then they need to subscribe to Mitten. I mean, it's real easy to do. In five minutes, you can become a subscriber and find it. So uh, as far as that, but question I have is you said it's saving I think I didn't read it I think you said one hundred and forty thousand dollars by getting rid of Google uh, two hundred and forty one I think okay is there any additional cost on the other side of the ledger for the Microsoft no that okay. we we own all the licensing we own everything so so no additional, no additional cost, cost no. why didn't we do this earlier you know time and resources this this is a huge undertaking oh, okay. this is a very okay. very big project it's, okay Probably yeah, the last take two years you've been kind of busy. Of year. The last couple of years you've been busy. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. That's for sure. <laughs> Thank you. Commissioner Sabatini. Thank you, Chair. Um, Jacob, I'm glad we're doing this. I remember years ago when we were contemplating between the two, and I was fighting for the Microsoft because I said one day we're probably going to switch over because it's going to make more sense financially. So we finally have gotten there. Um, but my question, and this might be more of a finance question, um, for the total amount of this, um, your funding source, 150000 is coming from the Capital Improvement Fund. From Capital Improvement. Uh, and the remainder is coming from savings from the jail management system replacement. Well, it's not, it's not really the jail management. You know, it might be from that, but we have two other line items where we didn't sp spend all the money. I talked to Steve Schmiegel and he's 100% fine with us using that. In my compute and storage, we spent, I think, 360,000 of a 410,000 budget, and also in um, our automation line item, there's 50,000. We, did, we didn't use all that money. So you had some savings I had some in savings those, in the okay, which plan. they retained and then are putting towards this. That's correct. Did we have savings in the jail management system? Yes, we, we did. Uh, we had, a very significant savings. Uh, I think the budget was 2.7 million, and that came down to just over a million. I think 1.2. So, so we had 1.5 million in savings on that project. That's correct. Okay. It was it, it was because the the largest potential vendor, which is our dispatch vendor, their price was 2.7 million. Okay. That's what I, I think all my other questions are for are for finance, but that's kind of where I was, the road I was going down. So thank you for confirming. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Kleinfeld. Thank you, Chair. Um, I agree with uh, Commissioner Farrington regarding the mitten site. It's sort of an odd thing if you heard it on the street. If they heard it, or if they heard it on the street, then I would think they would hear, hear where it is, where it's available. If somebody's providing them information that it's floating out there, then that person would have the information as to where it's floating. But anybody who works with government knows that site. And so that tells me you, you don't, we don't want to attract people that don't have any experience having worked with government. Um, on, so now my question, because I'm so technologically challenged, might not make any sense. And if it doesn't, please feel free to tell me uh, what you're saying doesn't make any sense. And then Joe, don't make fun of me over it. Um, 
you said we own the licensing is there anything about that where it eventually becomes obsolete the licensing itself it, it however it's supported yeah yeah the the licensing is a uh, uh, you know the licensing we own is our microsoft uh, maintenance if you can call it that account that we pay i, c I come to you uh, it's payable in, in April every year, and it's up to about a million dollars that we pay t towards Microsoft at this point in time. And that is all our software, Microsoft software. That so we, we won't pay any more in, nope. into that, but we get something else chunked into it. Uh, that's correct. Okay. All right. Well, it made about, maybe 70% it made sense. Thank you. <laughs> Seeing no other speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Item 6L, Agreement, Central Square Technologies, LLC, One Solution, maintenance for $336,450.08. I need a motion to move to full board. Thank you, Commissioners Wallace and Farrington made the motion and supported it to move this item to full board. As soon as we get done with the squeaking. Thank <laughs> you. Good job, Luke. Not Luke. <laughs> Go ahead, Jacob. Uh, commissioners, this is also a maintenance item that was not originally included in all the others. Um, <clears throat> it is our uh, payment for um, Central Square or One Solution, as most people know it, um, for this uh, coming year, 2023. Um, <clears throat> and um, uh, there's, you know, the way the contract is currently worded is there's two six-month extensions available as we finish workday or the implementation of workday because at some point in time everything's going to switch over from this system to workday. Um, <clears throat> so that w that's what this uh, $336,000 is for. Seeing no speakers, please vote. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioners. Item 7, public participation. This is an opportunity for the public to participate and to speak on any item for a maximum of three minutes. Any issue? Anyone from the public wish to speak? Last call, anyone from the public wish to speak? Hearing none, we'll close public participation and move to commissioner comments. Commissioner Zinner. Thank you, Chair. Um, I heard that Clinton Township <clears throat> has taken, uh, I believe it was Monday, has taken away Columbus Day. I consider that a travesty. Clear Christopher Columbus was a great man who loved people. And um, the agenda of um, some people lying about uh, the country's history is abhorrent to me, especially to children who don't know the truth at all. Um, I think this is an agenda against America, and I think it's despicable. I have no Italian blood at all in my heritage. I'm just an American. I don't know if there's a full board meeting coming up for them, but I just wanted people to know my thought on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chair. Mr. Chairman, Barb, they rescinded that motion. I think Commissioner Perna was there personally. They rescinded the fifth? They dropped it, but Jimmy can talk to it better. 
Commissioner he, Perna? He was trying to organize a group of battalions to show up, so he asked me. Yes, I was at the last two meetings, and last Monday we had standing room only. We had at least 150 people there. It was rescinded that Columbus Day will be recognized in Clinton Township. It was not going to be commingled with any other holiday, and it was rescinded unanimously by the Board of Trustees last Monday. So Columbus Day still stands in Clinton Township. Well, thank you for telling me that. The person who I asked about it said that it passed again, so I was misinformed. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Commissioner Hall. Commissioner Kleinfeld? Um, I, I don't know if Christopher Columbus loved people because I wasn't around when he was alive, but I believe Commissioner Hall was, so he might be able to <laughs> verify that. <laughs> um, the, uh, the other thing is I am technologically challenged, but uh, if Lynn is technologically challenged and does her job as good as she does, I'm in good company. And I really didn't have anything to say, but I'm going to make sure I say something every meeting until I leave just to get to Joe. Thank, Thank you, you, Chair. So well, pick on Joe there. Yes. Well, Joe can speak for himself now. Thank you. Uh, as commissioners, if you've looked at your agenda for tomorrow, you will note that there are probably, I'm not sure if it's 19 or 20 union contracts that have been ratified here in the county. I would strongly urge you to do as I have done the, today. And the, I spoke to uh, Andy McKinnon, even though that's not his bailiwick, he is aware of what's going on within the county as far as union contracts are concerned. They've all been ratified totally and completely. In fact, Andy told me there were a few of the contracts that were ratified 100% by the members, which is unheard of. And if any of you have been in government as long as I have and a lot of these people around here doing contracts with unions, it's unheard of. Union, because there's always dissenters. But he said that a few of the contracts were uh, uniformly uh, agreed upon 100%. So I urge you, if you have questions, there's 19 of them. We'll be going through them tomorrow. You're welcome to call HR and they'll give you any information that you need. Might save some time. Thank you, Chair. Seeing no other commissioners requesting to speak, we will move on. Motion to adjourn. Support. Thank you. Commissioner Romano and Hall <coughs> made the motion and supported adjournment. Please vote. You're going to pay for that one. <laughs> She's not serious, Jeff. Motion passes 12 to 0. Thank you.